I do not like these kinds of games. Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, Tower of Fantasy, I've tried, but I just couldn't stick with them. Each title followed the same pattern. Gorgeous music and visuals masking an overwrought narrative and paper-thin gameplay attached to a dressed-up slot machine built to inflict as much psychic damage as possible to whoever's stupid enough to play it. Also, can I be the first to say that the anime aesthetic is beyond played out? These games dangle over-designed and overpriced characters at their players using the same facial template with every new update, yet people keep on tugging on that slot machine. Needless to say, I am not the target audience for anime gotcha slop, which makes it all the more embarrassing to admit that I just played what waves non-stop for the last two and a half weeks. This is the first time that a game like this has clicked with me, so I felt compelled to dedicate my next upload to this strange, undercooked discount Genshin that has somewhat taken over my life. Is Wuthering Waves really that bad? Let's find out. But first, let's thank today's sponsor, it's Blue Apron. I'm just kidding, it's me. Writing, recording, editing, and producing my own background music, it's a lot of work, so here's the pitch. All videos two days early and ad-free for only $1 a month on Patreon. Alright, let's get back to work. I wasn't sure what to expect when I installed Wuthering Waves. I hadn't watched the trailer, or a preview, or any gameplay whatsoever. I wasn't even anticipating its release, I just heard about it on a whim and I thought, hey, why not? Maybe I can get a video out of it. I wish I could say that I had a positive first impression, but it ended up being quite the opposite. While the opening cutscene was intriguing, although it was pulled straight out of Kingdom Hearts, that voice acting, <laughs> voice acting is not good. Are you alright? Do you feel any discomfort? So you don't know why you're here, where you're from, or who you are. This has to stop, please. We cannot keep doing this. Lost Ark had the same issue, and now I'm playing this game. Just hire a better vocal director, please. I want to stick to this point for a minute or two, because I discovered something unbelievable after I finished playing through Wuthering Wave's current story. I needed to understand why the voice acting was that bad, and I concluded that it has nothing to do with the performers themselves. I began to detect an accent slipping into the otherwise flat American dialogue, so I looked into the cast and found that they're all, as far as I know, from the United Kingdom. One of the first characters who speaks in Wuthering Waves is Yang Yang, voiced by Rebecca Yeo. Now that our shared goal is within hand's reach, I... I do not want to let it slip away. That's not great. Now let's listen to what Rebecca Yeo sounds like with her natural accent. Hi, Steph. Hi, Laura. Your phone's ringing. Would you like me to answer? Why in the world would they make her speak this way? It's like a blend of American with a tinge of the Madoka Magica dub spoken at a whisper and recorded inside of a shipping container. I continued to investigate when I discovered these greeting videos on the Wuthering Waves official YouTube channel which feature a snippet of voice acting followed by the voice actor reading a brief description about the character's background and the game. For another example, here's Chish's voice actress Harriet Carmichael. You can always call on me if you ever find yourself in a pickle. Chisha is a junior patroller in Jinjo, but despite her low rank, she's passionate about doing her duty. Again, what were they thinking making her switch accents? The one that hurts the most, of course, is Yinlin, the character who tempted me to become a wallet warrior in order to pull her during her banner. We'll get into that later in the video, but first, just listen to this. We'll confront evil wherever it lies. Yinlin is a master of resources and information. She likes to have all the variables under control, lest they should cause any changes and problems. What the f***, man? All of these characters would have sounded much better if their actors were simply allowed to speak in their natural accents. I don't know who was in charge of capturing vocal performances for Wuthering Waves, but the bag was thoroughly fumbled. Right at the start, I opted to play the game in Japanese, which certainly helped, but then the game itself started, and I was surprised to find that it was, and continues to be, underdeveloped. As I've stated already, I'm not a fan of Genshin Impact, but I can recognize a technical marvel when I see one, and that game is Programming Wizardry Manifest. Not only does it run reasonably well on a dated PC, I can play it at 60 frames per second on my iPhone 12, although I would never do that to myself. Wuthering Waves, on the other hand, is not as elegantly crafted. The game suffers from an intense stuttering issue nearly every time you use the game's movement actions, making for an extremely annoying exploration experience. I was curious to see how the mobile edition of the game measured up, and it is bleak. Worse than annoying, the mobile version of Wuthering Waves is truly unplayable. While I'm happy to blame my aging phone for this issue, allow me, yet again, to demonstrate Genshin Impact running flawlessly on my device as a counterpoint. Hell, Oh, even Kuro Games' previous gacha title, Punishing Grey Raven, which is kind of awesome by the way, performs well, so what exactly went wrong with Wuthering Waves? If I could hazard a guess, 
A game of this scale was likely unimaginably expensive, not to mention the projected cost of future development support. Perhaps the bean counters at Kuro Games were nervous about how much money and time were being spent on Wuthering Waves and urged for a premature release in order to balance the company's coffers. We'll likely never know. As excited as I was to have another mobile game to play that isn't Marvel Snap or OSRS, Wuthering Waves will likely need another year or two of updates before it even begins to approach a playable state on mobile. Technical issues aside, the game's narrative is about as original as its aesthetic its user interface, and its character designs, which is to say, not much. You play as the nameless Rover, and you have amnesia, which is how you know that you're the chosen one. You're exposed to a laundry list of alien terminology, long enough to make a young adult novelist blush. Then you set off on your journey to become a, a resonator, to fight the tacit discords which come from the etheric sea, and defend against the Thranodian Orithrax and the phantoms of the Retroact Rain in order to stop the lament. Are you keeping up? All this to say, Wuthering Waves does not put its best foot forward. It is needlessly obtuse in its storytelling while also managing to be painfully cliche. It offers mediocre vocal performances which could have been stellar if not for the inexplicable accent switching, and worst of all, it's badly optimized for PC while being completely unplayable on mobile. If only the game wasn't so damn fun to play, then maybe I would have done something more productive with the last couple of weeks of my life. Up until this point, this channel has been exclusively about MMORPGs. Today, that list expands to include anime gacha slop. However, there's one genre of game that I will likely never discuss on this channel, although it's probably my true passion fighting games. You have not lived until you've practiced a combo in the training room for hours, then executed that combo on another player successfully. In a way, I'm always searching for that feeling across various genres of games that I play. Final Fantasy XIV actually has those rhythmic animation cancels, which is likely why I enjoy the combat in that game so much. Conversely, when I tried Genshin Impact, I thought I might find that same gameplay feel. In spite of my best efforts, I just couldn't wrangle its combat to do anything interesting. Wuthering Waves is a different story. I found the combat in Wuthering Waves to be so kinetic, engaging, and stylish that I actually produced the music that you just heard over that montage for the express purpose of making cool Wuthering Waves edits. Despite its narrative flaws or its technical limitations, this is a game that's fun where it counts, in the combat. Even when I only had access to the initial cast, which is Rover, Yang Yang, and Chisha, I could not believe how enjoyable it was to pilot that shell. Amber and Lisa could never. A key ingredient here, as I mentioned before, is the animation canceling. You can cancel out of just just about everything, which is like winning the lottery for a fighting game player like me. Plus, there are built-in systems like parrying, dodging into a counter-attack, intro and outro skills, and the forte gauge, which add enough complexity to the combat system to make it feel satisfying to engage with. The game also has a surprising amount of enemy variety with some fairly challenging boss encounters. The Crownless, for instance, has some phases of its moveset where I'm just forced to dodge for my life. It's kind of fantastic. What's just as important is having an ample opportunity to engage with the game's combat, and I think that Wuthering Waves pulls that off. While the game looks like Genshin Impact, moving through the open world is a completely different experience here. First, a shout out to whoever decided to unrestrict stamina usage outside of combat, allowing for infinite sprinting. Second, I'm going to commission a statue for whoever decided that wall running on any surface would be allowed. Lastly, and most importantly, may we all bow in the presence of whoever blessed us with this f***ing grappling hook. Wuthering Waves treats its traversal like it treats its combat. It understands that moving from one space to another should be fun, and the space between two objectives should be packed with things to do. Because of its high enemy density, it's easy to just flow throughout the world, fighting monsters and collecting echoes, earning exploration trophies, and stumbling into side quests. There are many games to play, which include flying challenges, obstacle courses, puzzles, and other non-combat activities. They're not mind-blowing, but they're enjoyable enough and the rewards are worth the detours. 
Wuthering Waves is categorically a mobile gacha game, which is not a charitable description since it is also an undeniably fun game to play, which makes all the difference. Now, as happy as I am to praise the things that the game does right, there is an economic question hanging over Wuthering Waves as it integrates its player base into its systems. Is the quality of the gameplay enough to outweigh the pressure of time-gated rewards, limited upgrade currencies, and the psychic pressure to pull that slot machine lever one more time? Undoubtedly, one of the biggest questions that new and interested players will want to have answered is whether or not Wuthering Waves is free to play friendly. Before I get into this section of the video, allow me to reiterate that I am not familiar with these gacha ecosystems. I do play live service games, sure, but I often never engage with in-game cash shops, which means that I'm unaccustomed to dealing with these economic models. Perhaps that makes me the wrong person to listen to whenever it comes to offering a verdict on the state of Wuthering Waves as a free to play game. Maybe it makes me precisely the right person, I'm gonna leave that up to you. In the dozens of hours of gameplay that I've extracted out of Wuthering Waves, I've not spent a single dime. From the perspective of an outsider to this genre, I was kind of shocked that Kuro Games allowed me to pull Calcharo for free and Verena through the beginner's track if I remember correctly. Then with all of the currencies that I'd earned via gameplay or from compensation, I was able to pull Yinlin. While I haven't looked too deeply into the meta of this game since it's largely single player and I really couldn't care less, I've seen some reports that the best team in the game is currently the one that I stumbled into free of charge. My character roster expanded a lot faster than I expected with many of these coming from in-game events, which are certainly preferable to a slot machine. So naturally, I feel like the game has been really generous to me, while asking for nothing in return. With that said, I'm cautioning against declaring that the game is more generous than its competitors, or that it's free to play friendly on principle since it's obvious that I've been luckier than most with my free currency. You see, the issue of monetization in a free to play live service game is difficult to talk about. If you play a game like Wuthering Waves for free, your experience is being subsidized by someone else. Game development costs are only climbing and supporting an ongoing game like this one is extremely expensive. While you might disagree with this notion, I feel as though a player like me, who has not invested a single cent into Wuthering Waves whatsoever, isn't entitled to expect anything from the game other than what's freely given. Obviously, the game is built to withhold desirable rewards from the player in order to incentivize spending. This creates a certain tension that might discourage you from playing the game. Upgrade resources, powerful weapons, and of course playable characters, Wuthering Waves drip feeds non-paying customers, promising more for anyone willing to swipe their MasterCard. In the face of these systems, I have to scale my expectations accordingly. I'm willing to accept the reality that I will likely never have a C6 Yinlin. Honestly, a C2 Yinlin would exceed my expectations. I'm not going to clear content as quickly as paying players. I won't pull every character that I want, and I will be forever dependent on the slowly recharging waveplate system to earn level up materials. This is the reality that I've accepted, and it's the reality that I think you need to accept too, especially if it matters to you whether or not Wuthering Waves is free to play friendly. You'll obviously have a better experience if you spend money, so be a responsible adult. Determine what the appropriate spending amount is for your budget and act accordingly. If you aren't willing to spend any money like me, then just be ready to have a lower quality experience. The important thing, and I'm confident enough after several dozens of hours of gameplay to say this, is that the bulk of Wuthering Waves as a video game exists outside of its stunted resource cycle. The game is highly playable and consistently fun for a free-to-play user like me. As long as you have the right expectations, I think that you'll agree. Alright guys, it's time to wrap this video up. What's the verdict on Wuthering Waves? It's a fun and fairly free-to-play friendly gacha title with kinetic gameplay, deep exploration, and quality presentation which is mired by heavy performance issues, an overwrought narrative, derivative character designs, mind-boggling voice acting, and of course, standard gacha slop that wants to separate you from your money as much as possible. To address the clickbait in the title, no, Wuthering Waves isn't bad at all. It is, in my opinion, a fundamental improvement over its biggest competitor Genshin Impact, and it has a promising future worth being a part of. The truth is that I kind of love it, and it's definitely impeded me from making more MMO content. Sorry, sorry, I will get back to work. With all that said, let's say our goodbyes. First, if you'd like some more Wuthering Waves content, say a comprehensive Wuthering Waves lore video, please let me know in the comments. Leave me some feedback in the form of a like or a dislike. If you're feeling generous, then be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one before you go. As always, minding my manners, thanks for watching.